Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. First of all, I need to say thank you to Sister Faye and the Community Services team for allowing me to come back. And in this capacity, we speak and encourage you. Um, there are a few things I just have to say. Um, I've now been gone for almost four years. Yes. And it's about time. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that I really enjoy about Colonel uh, East is the um, is the praise time with uh, Judge McLeod. It's, uh, it's amazing, you know. Um, in my church, we've been on the quiet side. <laughs> the hymn book. Praise the Lord for the hymn book. And it's good to be back. Good to see uh, the different faces. Um, and um, usually at this time, we haven't lunch. <laughs> But you know, all is good, and um, the Chinese, they come and they stay all day, and so they say, you know, we people who love religion, we can stay for a little while longer too. Is that okay? Amen. Our sister, um, I wanted me to mention um, that um, we have in the audience, Sister Martha Hutchinson. She's the president of the, the GK Federation. I'm just going to ask this question and just to stand. Sister Martha Hutchinson. Does it, she left already? Okay, well, make, we know, make her know that we did call her name. Okay. <laughs> I was in my car driving, and I just want to say, first of all, thank you to the pastoral staff for allowing me to be in this capacity as well. Uh, President Andre. Um, I was driving in my car and Sister Faye uh, called me on my cell phone and um, I was abiding by the law who runs through the car and she said she saw my sermon topic and she said, Pastor, we don't want that sermon. And I said, but you haven't heard the sermon yet. She said, but Pastor, I don't want that sermon. And then she said, um, I want a sermon on, on service. So I said, well, how do you know that that sermon is not on service? And she said, Pastor, we don't want that one. <laughs> so I went and I, I did one. Okay? <laughs> Let's just bow our heads. Loving God, we need a word from you. We need you to speak to us both collectively and individually. Amen. We recognize the times in which we're living, they're difficult times. Yes. And you've told us to look up for our redemption draws now. Now bless us as we worship you and speak to us, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So I changed the sermon to Luke chapter 10 and verse 25. So if you have your Bible, and behold, a certain lawyer stood up and he tested Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What is it you're reading of? And he said unto him, You shall love the Lord the God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said unto him, You've answered rightly. Do this, and then you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. He said to Jesus, but who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves. He was stripped of his clothing, he was wounded, and they departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, he came and looked. And he passed by on the other side. My, my, my. Then a Samaritan who journeyed came by, and he saw him and he had compassion. And he saw him and he had compassion. And he saw him and he had compassion. So he went to him and he bandaged his wounds and he poured some oil and wine. And he set him on his animal and he brought him to him and he took care of him. And on the next day, when he departed, he took two denarii, 
gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of them. And whatever you spend, when I come back, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, what did he say? The one that what? He showed mercy. Compassion in its broadest sense. Compassion in its deepest meaning is to suffer with someone else. You've heard me preach many times that fellowship is two fellows in the same ship. You don't understand, do you? Fellowship is two fellows in the same ship. When the ship goes up, they go up together. When the ship goes down, they go down together. Fellowship is not two fellas in a hole drinking tea. It's fellas that go through life experiences with one another. For we bear one another's burdens. This whole story is about compassion. The theme of compassion runs deeply to the teachings of Jesus. You see it in a way that he feels the very pulse of the epileptic uh, child. You feel it uh, when, when the story is told how when the woman was there just touching the hem of his garment. You feel Jesus' compassion just reaching out. You know, it doesn't take long for Jesus to understand the hurts and the, and the pain and the sorrow and even the loneliness that we feel. One of the things that I admire as I read to the Bible again this year is that when I get to passages like this, I, I feel that Jesus loves me in spite of how I am. Amen. You know, when Jesus taught, crowds gathered. And in verse 25 of this passage, the lawyer, who was a law professor, he wasn't a judge, but he was a law professor of rabbinical tra religious traditions, he was a man who had a PhD in rabbinical uh, studies. He asked Jesus a question, and everybody knew that a confrontation was about to start. Notice the difference between the two. This man came in his, in his purple and, and his robes, and Jesus is there in just a simple garment. This man came with his education, and Jesus came uh, with, with the schooling of carpentry. <laughs> this is the setting. The rabbi asked Jesus, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded by pointing him to the cross, and if you study your Sabbath school lesson, you'll understand what we're talking about. Amen. The professor was open for discussion, but he wanted Jesus to uh, also define a little further by who is just my neighbor. When Jesus raised that point, Jesus decided not to go into great debate, but Jesus decided to use a parable. Now, Desire of Ages, page 499, Elamite says that the priest and the Levi who are in this story were in the audience when Jesus related this parable. Be sure your sins Jesus began. He says a certain man. Jesus didn't give away the identity of the man. He didn't say what tribe he was from. He didn't say what race he was from. He didn't say what family or his social standing was. You see, um, he didn't even say if he spoke Patois. <laughs> you know, we don't need that information to understand the true meaning of a story. Jesus left out all that information, and he just simply said he was a certain man. It could have been anybody. He says nothing more. This man was on his way from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jesus identifies three people in the story. He identifies a, a, a poor victim, he identifies a selfish, absorbed passers-by, and he identifies a compassionate helper. Now the first two are introduced through profession. Hello? Yes. And through nationality. Yes. But
God, the victim, is only called a certain man. Do we need to know where people come from to help them? No. You think so? <laughs> Let's let the story go on. You'll soon find out. A lot of times, we put labels on people. Yes. Hello. Yes. A lot of times, we put labels on people. Everybody know that the land of wood and water is better than Trinidad. <laughs> Everybody knows that flying fish, no matter how, how tasty it is, right, can, 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 is better than St. Lucia. Everybody knows that, that no matter what Caribbean island you are from, Bermuda beats all of them. And the journey from Jerusalem down to Jericho is about 17 miles. It's rocky, it's lonely, it's mostly desert. This man literally uh, went down to Jericho because he went down 2,700 feet. Robbers were known to uh, attack people along this way and this certain man as he went down was overcome by travelers. That's just another name for robber. <laughs> Getting there, however, they beat him up, they stripped him of his clothes, and they left him half dead, the Bible says. His clothes were off and he was unconscious. So we can't identify who he is. We can't tell whether he's a, a poor man or we can't tell whether he's a, a rich man. All we know is that he is a what? Certain man. We don't have the advantage of getting our prejudices Going before, we know who this certain person is. And the truth is, we're all prejudiced. Yes. Yes. The other day, I, I was skimming, you know, I, I'm a man, and so I've got all the big um, sports channels, you know, uh, and, and John inherited that. No cooking channels, no, it's just, just the sports channels. And the other day, I, I was, I was uh, you know, scrolling through, trying to find something to watch, and I'm so glad the basketball is on now, because that's what life is about. So, <laughs> And uh, I, I saw this, this, these people, they, they were fugilating, I'm sorry, they were boxing, okay? And, and it was a white guy and a, and a black guy. Guess who I was for? <laughs> You're not telling me who I was for. We all prejudice. In fact, when you read Southern writings, Anna White says that racism is going to continue until Jesus comes. But racism should not exist in the house of God. You see, we're all born of one blood, and our Father is above, so we're all family. So it should not be a big thing in this church. That means that Jamaicans, yay, yay, Bayesians, yay, yay, Trinidadians, yay, yay, Bermudians, yay. They're gonna have a Jamaican side to heaven? <laughs> and I know that Jesus loves Bermuda more than he loves anywhere else because the Bible says when he returns, he should return from the east, and Bermuda comes before Jamaica. <laughs> Make people laugh and then shove the truth in. 
You know, we gotta put away this class stuff and all of this stuff. And remember that we're here as God's workers. Okay, we're done, Jesus. Maybe get back to this. Okay, Jesus left the man naked. No clue of his status. He's unconscious, so we can't hear his accent. Jesus made the story tell us nothing about a human being except that he was in need. He was half dead, he was beaten, he was robbed, he was barely breathing, he was bloody, he was near death. This certain man was left to die. Then the Bible continues, and by chance, hello, by what? Yes. The Bible said it, not me, the Bible said by chance that a priest and a Levi came by. Uh, it, well recorded in heaven's calendar of events. There are no accidents, there are no happenstances. So Jesus was specific when he, and he, was, he meant this when he said by chance. You see, all things do work together for good and reveal whether we have faith or not. At this particular experience, destiny was meeting with opportunity. Kind of like that, don't you? Destiny was meeting with opportunity as divinity was giving humanity the chance to help one of our own. One who was in desperate need of help. With priests, we are told, as he was walking by, he, he, he saw the man, did not get too close, and so the Bible says he passed by on the other side. Can you believe that? Do you know in Italy it is against the law that when somebody is in trouble for you not to help them? Cross the street to avoid him. Life was hanging in the balance, but the priest was only concerned about whether he was pure and whether he would be undefiled. Jesus continued by saying, and a Levi came by. Now he was probably from the upper class, well-to-do family, and he had the opportunity to help. But the Bible says he came, took a look at him, and then he did what? He passed by. Then a Samaritan, the Jews called them dogs. A person of a mixed race. One who belonged to a despised people. That this Samaritan would not be allowed into the Jewish temple. This Samaritan's son would not be allowed to date that, that teacher or that, that doctor's child. This Samaritan would not be invited to the Levi's house for lunch. Notice the word. The Bible says the priest and the Levi came there by chance, but the Samaritan came there by purpose. When reaching where the man was, he did not walk by, but the Bible says he had what? Compassion. He pours oil and wine into the man's wounds and to keep out infection. He wrapped the man's wounds with his own headpiece. He puts the man on his donkey, he put him in his BMW. I don't have a BMW anymore, so it's all right, you know. He puts him in his BMW and, and blood all over the place. He takes him to a, 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 an inn or a hotel, and then he goes inside and he, he cares for him. He stays up all night. Now imagine, he doesn't know him. But he cares for him all night, and then in the morning, I can't take this, in the morning, he gets up and he says, listen, uh, I've taken care of him. If he needs any more uh, assistance, here's my American Express. It says, don't leave home without him. And he, he puts down a deposit and says, listen, if you need some more when I come back. Now we can understand if the man, if it was the man's relative, if it was the man's child, but this is a person he doesn't even know. Jesus then looks at the professor and says, which of these not acted like a neighbor? He responds, he who showed mercy. And Jesus said, go and do the same. Turn to the person beside you and say, go do the same. <laughs> now this is a familiar story, right? But in some ways, it's not like, like the hymns we sing. We sing a lot of hymns like bringing in the sheaves, but how many of us brought somebody to church today? 
We sing a lot of hymns, but we're not really caught up with what they really mean. You know, a, a lot of times we hear sirens uh, wailing uh, from an ambulance that's going by, and we just ignore it. Sometimes we hear dogs barking, and it, because it's not near us, we don't care. You see, uh, this compassion that Jesus talked about must not be regarded as something for the simple-minded or for the naive. Our culture in Toronto, our culture in this present world is ruthless. In our culture, we leave homeless people to sleep on park benches. In our culture, we leave people to sleep on the, on the asphalted uh, tarmac or the sidewalks and we pass them by. In our culture, we leave people to sleep on the grid for the subway to keep warm. In our culture, we hear about drugs and how it affects everybody else. But as long as it doesn't come knocking on our door, it's not my problem. We lack compassion in our communities. We lack compassion in our institutions. We even lack compassion in our churches. We've gotten so used to human suffering that we've become numb to the needs of humanity and we act in, in inhumane ways towards one another. The other day I was walking by and I was hurting, hurting deep. And somebody was coming by and they said, how you doing? I said, I'm not doing too good. He said, that's nice, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Suffering. We've gotten used to human suffering that we've become callous, we've become indifferent to the sufferings of those around. We've become desensitized. I mean, I'm not proud of this, but I gotta be truthful. I used to read to my second son when I was driving. Yeah. Book open, reading, driving in Bermuda. Except one day, as I was driving and I was, I was getting to the part where Humpty Dumpty was on the wall and it was really animated and we were really getting up with it, when I looked up there was a truck in front of me and BLAM! Fenders all bumped up, bonnet all smashed up. I turned around, looked at the boy and said, shut your mouth. <laughs> Don't open your mouth. Keep your mouth quiet. The boy never opened his mouth. When I got out of the car, I just looked at the man and said, but when I looked up, you were there. <laughs> but that's not the bad part. Here I am, the truck's there, the man comes out, pulls out something, says, I'm fixed, what about you? <laughs> I was all mashed up. And here I'm standing up there, all by myself, you know what I mean? My car's all mashed up, we're waiting for the police to come so that we can take blah, 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 blah. And then uh, 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 along the other side of the road, now you know, Bermuda's roads are not like Canadian roads. Uh, you know, they, we got just two sides to the road. You know, we drive on the right side, that's the left side. And you know, everybody else drives over on the wrong side. And so like, um, here these people were coming by, they're driving by. And then I saw some of my church members. And I said, oh good, somebody's gonna come and they're gonna be with me. And you know, as they drove by, everybody kept their heads straight. 